there, there are going to be some right away acquisitions that we need to go through. It's time. It's it's a time constraint if we did sidewalks with the same project because there are some right away issues. Uh, there has to be a topo done. There's got to be secured right aways and permissions. <coughs> so we didn't want to have to delay with securing the right aways. We like to get the road done now and then we can do the sidewalks and the sidewalk work uh, and getting the road completed for them really have hurt anything because it'll be out of the road. And at the side and at the intersections, we're going to build like we, the we, ramps with the road. And so we also uh, talked about it that if we bid this out separately, because uh, a, a, a general contractor will probably sub this out and they'll add a cost and we think we get a better price too if we just bid the sidewalks out separately and just have a company come in and do the sidewalks. So what, where are we thinking the sidewalks? <coughs> Every place in this area, the uh, that area that you just had? Party and Goddard, where well, there's no yeah. sidewalks. Goddard is all completed with sidewalks. There's all no gaps. Party. There's yeah. no gaps. So yeah, I went through it. Okay. So Party, party has, gaps. Yeah. has gaps. Well, That's we're going to do east and west. We're going to try. But you need permission. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you're going to have to. That's why, yeah, we, we kind of did a preliminary okay. look and wanted well, to separate. I'm glad you're trying. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm glad well, you're trying. Uh -huh. you know? okay, we can get at least on the west the whole way. I don't know exactly how it works, but it's my understanding when you do these projects um, where you can see the evidence of a makeshift walking path, yeah. we're obligated to make the effort of trying to put or install the side. Yeah, so for FAC, for sure, they will require part of your funding to go towards that sidewalk if there's a clear walking path. Um, it's like what happens on telegraph underneath the e course right there. You can see where the paths were. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They call them like goat trails, or, <laughs> but, but they're just, just paths worn out where people walk. And I know that the one side by Heritage Park of Part E gets a lot of traffic, but we also know there's a lot of complications over there. So we'll try. We'll, we'll do our best and see if we can make it happen. Item 10 is a motion to approve authorizing the mayor to sign a purchase agreement on behalf of the city of Taylor for the sale of parcel number as read in the amount of $1,000. Proceeds go to the general fund. Uh, and just to not build a lot of free feet wide, uh, okay. adding green space to their uh, yard already. Other neighbor was not interested in the engineer. So it's not building over to start doing the house out. Next question from that. Yeah. Item 11 is a motion to receive and file a home deferred loan for homeowner 2019 10 in the amount of $500. To receive plumbing, emergency plumbing, funded <coughs> through the community development block grant, not to exceed program limits. Chairman, well, we, uh, if you remember, probably about three weeks ago, I, I emailed the entire body uh, and let them know of the situation. It was an elderly resident. We had a complete backup. Uh, we reached out to uh, Southgate to give us quick plumbing if they have done emergency services prior, and we're very fair with the rates. Obviously, uh, they went and snaked it and were able to just clear it just up with this amount so they don't see that there's any further damage. So, this should be at this point. Question? Okay, item 12 is a motion to receive and file the January 2020 paid invoice report. Richard's here if there's any questions. Okay. Item 13 is a motion to receive and file the January 2020 budget performance report. is a motion to approve the removal of ordinance violations in the amount of $504. Citation numbers 123452 and 123453 from the winner 2019 tax bill of parcel number as read. This was a homeowner who received violations stating that her property was a rental. It wasn't a rental. She had not received the violations because they were sent to her mortgage company when the um, violations are written, depending on where the mail to address it. And so she had never actually received them. She provided all the back documentation there that I provided. <coughs> the home said is she has been a resident there since she purchased the home. Item 15 is a motion to approve the March 2020 pay 
Item 16 is a motion to approve purchase of first aid supplies through live action safety in the amount not to exceed $5,000 for fiscal year 2019-20 to be paid out of risk management fund. Uh, any questions for Sheila on this one? Seventeen is a motion to approve payment for monster premium job ads in the amount of three thousand dollars for fiscal year 2019-2020 to be paid out of the general fund. Uh, this is also the same concept. Uh, we're just looking for uh, that PO to be set up so that when we do have uh, jobs that we need to post to monster that we already have uh, the postings out there. Um, we've used monster for probably five years now for advertising. Um, and each of those ads is about $230 um, each time we post. So this just allows us to have them available, ready to go. And, um, this is what I was looking for on the other one. There's nothing like this on the first one. That's what I was wondering about backup. Kind of thing. That's on this one. Um, yeah, I apologize. I, I don't know if Richard said other budget sheet. Yeah, I got the information late. And okay. We that's what I was Sorry, I didn't there, there is money budgeted in the risk management account. Um, we just had to do an uh, internal move, but there is money budgeted in the account. Item 18 is a motion to approve the solicitation request from Taylor North Little League to hold a canister drive on April 17th through the 19th, 2020, and June 12th through the 14th, 2020. Okay, any questions on that? Item 19 is a motion to approve to refer petition to vacate retaining all utility easements. 20 foot wall, wide public alley adjacent to lots 36 70 four inclusive of the Telegraph Park. Uh, sub northwest corner of section 9, city of Taylor. And this is uh, the alley is located on the east side of Telegraph Road between Telegraph and West Point and Champaign and Crowley. The planning commission for study, public hearing, and Submit recommendation to City Hall. Ms. Grayson? Is this for 
somebody looking to build there? Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I know this is Laura's. I don't know, Jessica, if you have any other backup on this, but uh, I can answer it if, if it's all right. Um, yeah. Laura's out, I believe, her mother passed away. Um, this is uh, the first step in vacating the alley adjacent to the property that was recently agreed to be sold by TIPA to the Dairy Queen development on Telegraph Road. So this process was teed up by Jerry Markey before he left and just never completed through. So Laura began the process. This is the first step in the process. Um, it will ultimately come back to this body after it goes to the Planning Commission. I don't know if there's one or two hearings before the vacation can occur. And they reach out to the people that live with Yeah, I think this, uh, this, um, the names are detailed on the back, uh, backup document. I think most of the sites are owned by the city of Taylor. I think there's a couple of pro adjacent properties that maybe two or three that do have outside ownership, um, and they have been contacted, and they will be notified of the uh, public hearing as well. Any questions on that? City Hall, and I think we're going to do the same with the CBS location also. The issue is, is they don't make these poles anymore, and, and so we have to make a decision if we want to buy um, some. There's a lot of them are um, they're deteriorating, so we're going to either be faced with buying a special lot of a similar pole and buying 90 or 100 poles, whatever they are, or we're looking at the option of going to a stock pole that ETE has that's decorative, that kind of fits. It may not be as fancy. A little shorter, I believe. It's, um, uh, but I think it's an option that we're going to likely pursue because it'll it'll look good and be. We think it'll be far more effect cost effective. Why didn't we do that at the beginning? I don't know. These were installed 20 years ago. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, then we didn't yeah, find out they were discontinued until we tried to order new ones. Yeah. Well, let me, let me ask you this, Keith. In all honesty, as much as these lights are hit, and as much as they're out, because you drive down Telegraph, have them are out anyway. So in my opinion. There's so many of them out there. Is there a way that we can maybe start taking out a couple in between? You know, I mean, to me, there's more than enough light on Telegraph. Well, that uh, they, they do like surveys to make sure you have a you have a required lighting. Of course. Right, but that was more of a decorative thing back then. I, I I'm assuming that style. Yeah. 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 yeah, And I mean, it just seems like every time I drive down Telegraph, there's just multiple lights down on a regular basis. It should be any down right now. <laughs> There's quite a few. There's a just caught up. Unless you want to get back down. From the thrifty, thrifty floor, she got the strobe going again. We, we've had several <laughs> internal meetings with uh, the process of how, how police notifies risk management. Risk management notifies DPW. DPW notifies uh, uh, DTE. And then, of course, that, that's how the process goes. There's a series of dominoes that fall. Oh, and I understand. It's Those are very ongoing things. thing. And I can't imagine the amount of money we're constantly pumping out. We try to keep people lit all the time. Now we do have some luck.